back, motherfuckers. Things are going good, man, no complaints. Uh, everything's going good with V. You definitely put in the work when he was back in London, so he's feeling miles, so much better than when he was here last. So, yeah, man. I'm Paul Longworth. Uh, I'm with Coach Larry Wade Strength and Conditioning and PR Health. So for this camp, I am head strength and conditioning for Vidal, and also I do all of his physio while he's here in the States. Yeah, so uh, strength and conditioning wise, we've just kind of been taking it slow, feeling it out. Um, doing a lot of very straight stuff, no rotational things, and kind of dabbling with it to see how his back's doing. Cupping has been working great on him. He gets huge relief from it. Um, mostly all active cupping though. Um, a little bit of eye stem and scraping. But yeah, mainly just movement stuff and massage. That's good, man. Great job. Great yeah, yeah, job. definitely. Yeah, I was with Vidal for his last camp doing strength and conditioning as well. Things went great there, no complaints. Uh, and you know, we expect to do the same with this. We got a little bit more time than expected with the fight getting pushed back, but you know, to me, I, I see that as a plus. It gives me more time to do my job, get him in even better shape, and you know, get in there and do his thing. I mean, maybe it's been different for you, but he's, he's been compliant with me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I, I think I got an advantage there though, because if he's not compliant with me in the massage and physio, then I just bust his ass in the weight room. Condition, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh... For sure, we can do that. Sweet man. Alright brother. You too man. Take it easy. See big announcement. Big fight. Big announcement. Come on. Come on. Found out good news. What? Let's go. Come on. Man said he's fighting on the what? Mike Tyson cards are Big drip. Big drip. Is he fighting? Look cool. Look cool. Is he fighting? I don't know some. Boy. I don't know. I don't it know. don't matter. He gonna do the job anyway. He gonna do the job anyway. Look cool. Look cool. Bye. You know, you might have to do the extreme thing. Come, go to LA, but just watch it in a bar or something. Because then we can still go to the, we can still party afterwards. <laughs> I would have come back to London, to be honest, but you know how the travel ban and all that is. So. So if you got a visa to go to college here or something, they're letting people here, but they're not letting just. Tourism, that like, tourists just come over. Come so you look better apply to one college or something. <laughs> so, do uni all over again. After I got that hospital bill, I should have went uni anyway. What? What? Like, that was money. But listen, I'm gonna go train anyway. I just want to call you, man, quick update you, Lord. Uh, all right, love, love. A little bit. As of right now, I'm the, the head coach of Adele Riley, and um, I think extremely, extremely highly of a team like he's already been here, because he has a very, very old spirit, and me and him talk about almost anything other than boxing. He's one of like those special fighters that, in a sense, keeping me into this sport. Every time that he comes out here and he's getting ready for a fight, I get excited about getting up and and ready to train him, you know, so he motivates me. I'm glad that he's back out here and I'm glad that he's he's having a, um, a great opportunity to get on um, the show with Tyson and um, Jones. I'm expecting a great performance from him. Step. My name is Otis Pumpton Jr., new addition to Vidal Riley's camp. Uh, we're adding a lot of different things to his arsenal as far as sitting down on punches, turning them over, proper hand-foot-eye coordination, 
uh, getting everything going and look forward to being world champ within the next year, two year and a half. And everything looks good from this point and all you cruiserweights, watch out, he's coming. So, it's fair to say you've seen the camp, you know, just a little bit, not too much, but we've just given you some introduction to the team, new members of the team, how we've been working, uh, what I'm improving on, and just counting down to what is the biggest fight of my career so far, being on the undercard of Mike Tyson and Ray Jones. Um, you would have missed a key face from the camp today because he's not in town. But of course I had to catch up with him and have a conversation and that's a minute. So I'm just gonna run the clip of the conversation we had earlier. He was kind of breaking things down for me and just making sure I understand the magnitude of this event as any manager should. And obviously he does a great job in that field. So um, yeah, let's get into that conversation. Just, just briefly. Mr. Amir, you missed the media, my own created media workout today. I heard, I heard it was spectacular. Yeah, we done good. We do, we're making it look like all access. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> as you should, Videl. I mean, uh, I'm in Detroit this week. You know, I have some uh, meetings out here. We've got a big fight plan for the, uh, now it's November 28th, it's been pushed back. But uh, regardless of, you know, the excitement, everything around it, Videl, you know this is the biggest stage you've fought on. I mean, we started in, in, uh, we started in Mexico and in Tijuana just to kind of get a gauge for everything. Uh, yeah. And man, it's been, it's been bigger stages ever since then. The very next fight was, uh, you, you know, the Pacquiao card. Right after mm -hmm. that, your third fight, you were the headliner on a pay-per-view event in Dubai. And then you had your, May, then we signed with Mayweather Promotions and you debuted on the Mayweather Promotions card, had the highest viewership there. And now you're on the pay-per-view event of Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. I mean, this, this stage, yeah. This stage is huge. So, uh, you know, we've got to, I, I get it. You know, we still got to do the YouTube stuff and you still got to do all of that. But once camp starts, all that shit goes away. And it's all about winning and winning by spectacular fashion. We don't want these, these fights to go the distance anymore. No. And we got a couple extra rounds, so. Yeah. Should be. And, right. And this is the first time now you're going to go six rounds. Um, the, I've got a, a couple of more surprises that I'm going to let you know about uh, a little bit later for this fight. Um, okay. but, uh, well, right now I just want you to focus on six rounds. The kid's a tough kid. Listen, Rashad's coming, you know, and whether it's Rashad or somebody else, you know, if in case he gets hurt or anything happens, we've got a backup and his backup is, uh, just as solid, just as tough, probably a little bit tougher. Um, but regardless, you're in for a tough fight and I don't want these fights to go in the distance anymore, man. All your fans don't want to see this thing go the distance. Um, no, I know. I know. But that's why, that's, that's why we're practicing working on new things obviously i showed the uh audience that we brought in otis <laughs> what, what's his name otis yeah not otis yeah. otis 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 no but it, no 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 I was, I, you know i've explained why we we brought him in and um what he's adding in terms of you know the sitting down on the punches more power uh as opposed to finesse but that should help get the finishes and add to my game oh he's he's the perfect assistant trainer you know and i'm sure you told your fans but jeff is still the head trainer otis cool. yeah. uh, assistant trainer and and i don't know if you told the, the you know everybody that how close jeff and otis are uh you know otis was roger's caregiver for the past 20 years of his life he was the one that was taking care of roger he's been a part of the mayweather family for 40 years um so he's he's he's, he's really another mayweather uh, so we're keeping it in the family, and and no, he's a great addition. Did you guys work today? Yeah, we did. We did. Nice. I made sure he didn't. He was. He didn't want to go on camera at the start. He didn't think that we we wanted him on camera, but 
that was the whole point. Today was just about making sure everyone in the team uh, gets, you know, some some attention and some promotion. So I gave him a gave him a Vidal Riley t shirt as well. And uh, good. So he, yeah, I let him know, you know, he, this is this is the team now, and we're we're happy to have you a part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He's home team now, and 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 Otis is is one of the good ones in this sport. So I'm glad that we brought him aboard, and I'm glad that he feels comfortable enough to be a part of the team. And man, it's it's all uh, it's, it's all glory and high road from here. But you know, we're gonna put in that work. So uh, we're gonna, you know, we were ready to go by the way, September 28th or September. I know, uh, I know. Uh, was September 12th weeks. was it? September 12th. No, we were ready. Yeah. ready. yeah, so we're gonna take the, our foot off the gas a little bit. You know, rest work on some technique stuff and then we'll hit camp again, have a nice long camp, uh, strong camp. And again, Vidal, I can't, I can't stress it enough. It, it, this fight has to be an exclamation point for you there. This is the biggest stage of your career. And I'm saying it openly in front of everybody here. It's gotta be, yeah. it's gotta be that way. So all the YouTube bullshit, all that stuff has got to go away. The music, I know you love that and you're, and it's getting great for you, but that all goes on pause. Boxing is boxing and that's it. Always. No distractions. Always. All right, brother, I'm not going to keep okay. you too long, but I needed to make right. sure you was a part of the announcement video. Well, I appreciate that very much, champ. You always uh, take care of the team well. We love you. Yeah, I'll just get you off camera before you start telling me off. <laughs> <laughs> you know that shit's coming. <laughs> All right, champ. All right, brother, thank you. So, as you can hear, He's on my case as always. He's telling me to cut down my music and cut down all my other ventures and recording and YouTube stuff. But of course we're gonna do it anyway because that's what we are. We're a brand. Of course I'm a fighter. Of course I take camp serious, but I'm a brand and that's what I do. I do my thing. But um, back to the card, how crazy, you know, five fights in to be on the undercard of two legends when we're thinking about it Mike Tyson I, I should not be on his undercard he shouldn't even be competing anymore for me to be talking about being on his undercard I've seen his clips his highlights for years his interviews for years some of my favorite interviews Oh, of Matt Tyson. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. And to think that I'm going to be on the undercard is another. It's just a crazy four. Ray Jones, as we all know, right behind me, my favorite fighter of all time. I never thought again that I would be on his undercard. It was just a thing where I'd, I'd admire these legends for what they do, and never actually be in the same ring on the same night. It's just, it's mad. You know, it's not, as as uh, Ben's people know, obviously a rolling cheeky team, as he says, don't deep it. Don't let it get to your head because that's what we're here for. We're here to live the emotion, you're there to deliver. And he's right, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to deliver and I will. This will be my best performance um i just know what i've been learning i know what i've been working on and i'm just ready to execute it and use it to the fullest i'm very sure that this guy will come it will be tough and he's coming to win it's a major platform but at the end of the day we send him back that's what boxing's about people challenge you you send them back and it shall be no different on november 28th um bringing otis into the team otis whatever because I know for the few people watching that are going to correct my English was a great move. Him and Jeff are very close, as Amir was saying. And yeah, the chemistry has been amazing from the jump. And I'm learning new things. I feel more powerful and I'm adding different bits to my style. So it's exciting to see how that again is used on the uh, 28th of November. Um, a lot of people have obviously seen that me and Jake Paul are on the same card, which is interesting and is definitely not something I saw coming, but good for him and good for me. You know, he's gassed. It's his second fight and he's on the Matt Tyson undercard. I'm gassed. It's my fifth fight and I'm on the Matt Tyson undercard. So we have something in common there. Um, you know, we only have on paper. We only have three fights that separate us, but 
you know, we all know the reality of everything and people talking about fight Jake. Like, it's not gonna happen. Everyone has their role, everyone has their lane, and everyone needs to stay in it. At the end of the day, I'm happy for him that he's getting these opportunities this early into his boxing career, and I'm happy for myself that I'm getting this many um, opportunities early into my professional boxing career because as we know, I have been competing as an amateur for a long time. I did compete as an amateur for a long time. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's crazy and it's just funny how you know life works out and circles end up interlinking and you just can never predict these things. You know, he's gonna be after me on the card because I believe he's the co-main event. Um, some people may feel that it is wrong because you've got a le legitimate professional fighter that's um, going on before an entertainer, uh, social media guy, or whatever, YouTuber. But I think, listen, at the end of the day, when it comes to the viewers and who's tuning in and who's bringing the most numbers behind Tyson and Jones, it's Jake Paul. So him being called main event makes sense being the fact that he is the second reason why people are coming to the event so i don't feel hard done by at all i just appreciate my position i appreciate the fact that i'm such a uh exclusive and difficult card to get on that i have a placement and i will make sure i show out and do the best i can um, but yeah, the rest of it, I don't take it personally at all and I don't feel like anyone at home should waste their energy on it. We should all focus on the positives and that's a great opportunity for the both of us and we're both young, 23 years old and doing our thing. Um, cutting back from camp was obviously frustrating because we was preparing for a September 12th date. But it just gives us time to work on other things again, get the streams going, um, focus more on, on content and also I guess more strength side of training as opposed to fitness and getting uh, you know all the cardio super high right now so yeah just different focus but professional athlete we train full-time we focus and we get the job done and that's pretty much it um, in terms of my brand real athletics obviously we've been quiet for a long time it's hard to upkeep something especially with COVID you know that just ruined everything and the flow of everything but coming back with this fight we will have some brand new designs some brand new fight t-shirt designs we're going to do a replica version we're going to do a actual fight t-shirt official version that i myself and the team will be wearing um and yeah we might even drop a little tracksuit with it or something but trust me it's going to be new it's going to be fresh we've got brand new designers working on everything so i'm excited to see how that comes out uh and yeah that's it really from me i'm trying to think if i missed anything oh yeah i'm gonna try and do like a little weekly countdown type thing um where you can kind of just see the behind the scenes of how I'm preparing for the event if anything interesting happens you know press conferences media days stuff like that I want to give you guys a little insight to that on the channel so stay tuned for that uh rolling cheeky always make sure you're subscribing the real and wills podcast always make sure you're subscribing and of course of course the realest channel always make sure you're liking and subscribing and viewing and sharing and caring and all of that and if you don't know what i do by now it's that time ben said he's riding so we hop in the whip slip and sliding got bottles on ice so we gliding then man play hide and seek so we finding not all of my brothers are abiding but we get the job done right time and the hands be blinding So they say I move Cray from Quay in the day Actions no say, not a speech thing 